Hey guys, Sick Motion here with the patch 7.9 notes, or uh, it's the mid-season changes as they do every year. This one's a lot shorter than the past mid-season changes, but it's a lot longer in comparison for a patch, so I'm going to try and get through this as quickly as possible. Um, some stuff that I might not go over as in-depth, like the new champion changes, I won't be doing as much. Um, just because that's something that most people probably look into more on their own, or you might want to see gameplay from it. Um, I'll just kind of go over important points as far as that. Um, I actually haven't played the new Maokai at all um, with the... I'm actually kind of triggered why this, there's so much room on this side, but there's no room on this side. Because I balanced it based on the box. But okay, well, whatever. Um, I didn't play the uh, new Maokai on the PBE. I did play the new Shizwani and a bit of the new Zack. The new Zack, I haven't seen wh what he shipped as, but it looks like there was some graphical... Um, it just looked uncomfortable, like his new Q, the way that it was animated. So I'm not sure if that changed or not. But uh, the Maokai, I did not play. I haven't heard any of the new voice effects or anything. I haven't actually even seen his ult. Um, actually, I saw his ult today. I haven't used his ult. So I'm not exactly sure. I, w I won't be really commenting on that too, too much. Um, I'll comment on the other stuff that I kind of saw in his kit. Um, his passive no longer uses a stacking mechanic. It uses a uh, each time Maokai casts a spell or is struck by a spell. So it's not like Cassidy, um as far as I can tell. it He has to actually be hit by it, not just cast near him. Um, he'll heal for a flat amount, which is new, um, and... Uh, a percentage of his max health so before it was just five six and seven percent max health it was a little easier to get off because now it's um 30 25 20 seconds but it also is reduced by those spell cast your own as well as enemies um but now there's a flat amount on it so that's new as well as um the percentage is actually a lot higher now as well so at level um 17 is where it maxes. You'll be getting 10% of your max, 10.5% of your max health as a heal, plus 130 flat. So that's actually pretty big. Like if you have like, say like 4K health, um, might be a little high of uh, an estimate here or for an example, but that's going to be 550 health that you heal, which will be further increased by Spirit Visage, which also has more healing on it now as well. Um, it's going to be more meaningful than um, kind of just before you take attack speed runes on Maokai because every single time you'd auto in a team fight, chances are that there'd been enough for you to cast another one. Um, there still might be. I mean, if you're getting hit by everything, it's going to be a lot. It's still going to be charging pretty much just as fast. Um, it, you get you cast two spells, you get hit by three, and then you, it's up again. Um, so I think that's pretty strong um, playing around that. His Q. Um, is pretty much the same, roughly. Um, the movement speed slow is no longer um, one and a half seconds, though. It's 99% for a quarter second, uh, rather than uh, half that, basically, for one and a half seconds. So it, it's less like permanent sticking power, but, I mean, you can just get that and then get a, um Iceborne or something. Uh, Twisted Advance. I know there was some issues with the projectile speed on the PBE, so I think they reverted that because it doesn't say the projectile speed is any shorter here. Um, the big change here is the root duration is actually down and the percentage health damage on the ability, which used to be 13% uh, uh, of the target's max health, is no longer there. It's just uh, flat damage now. Um, still has an AP ratio. They move that percentage damage, however, to his sapling toss, which is now AOE percentage health damage for anyone that gets hit by it. And it actually seems a lot stronger here. Um, the cooldown on it is down one second. The mana cost is 60 at all ranks rather than scaling up, so it's going to be easier to use. You're probably going to be leveling the second, or you might actually level it like in combination with your Q just because of how good it is here. The sapling duration is 30 seconds at all levels rather than scaling up, unless you throw it in a bush. I'll go skip down to that. If it's tossed in a bush, it'll last um, longer, up to 70 seconds, which is 10 seconds longer than the previous. So you can use these in lane really, really effectively. It'll stay longer in the bush. And what ends up happening if they're in the bush is they have a larger detonation radius, so it'll do damage in a larger um, AoE as far as I'm 
aware I think that's the detonation radius like I'm not sure the trigger radius where it like l latches on to people I don't think that should be bigger that's not what I'm getting out of that but I haven't tried it like I said um, but those saplings are now where the percentage health damage is moved to so it does um, about a hundred less flat damage at max level and about 40 at early levels but it does six to eight percent depending on level um, of the targets max health the slow is also now 35% for two seconds rather than 50% for one, so that gives you more of that um, uh, long duration slow that you're missing from your Q now. Um, but the sapling damage is AoE, bigger explosion radius, um, and does percentage health damage. So you're not just doing percentage health damage to that one person, you're doing it to everyone in the team. And if the sapling uh, toss... Um, was in a bush on enemies caught in the explosion take an additional 100% damage over two seconds. So you're reapplying all of that damage, all that percentage health damage, again over two seconds. Uh, so it's like ticking down. But basically you're doing double damage on the sapling toss, which is 16% max health at level uh, five of this spell. So making really good use of those is going to be really important. I like that they emphasize that because his kit before didn't really have much emphasis on making good use out of his... Um, out of out of his saplings which i thought was a really unique part of his kit but they were kind of just like a glorified like temporary like vision that might slow people you never really use them in fights anyway they weren't the greatest that kind of you just put it behind your tower to see if you're getting dove and probably still got dove anyway because it didn't do much so i like that uh his ult uh now creates a massive wall of brambles that slowly advance forward each bramble damage and roots enemies uh hit um does damage um, roots for up to 2.4 seconds um, scaling over how far it's traveled so if you're able to slow them with like a sapling toss it'll be easier to hit obviously if you're able to do something else um, I haven't even like I said I haven't used his ult so um, I think I might actually go and like use it in a practice game though because I'm interested in playing Maokai just because of the sapling toss change I think that's cool um, also with the gutting of the sunfire that's going to be pretty strong because it doesn't feel like you really want to build a sunfire anyway. You might as well just get like a catalyst, not necessarily even to like build it into like uh, a rod of ages or anything, but just hold on to the catalyst. I think it will be really strong um, and kind of replace the health that you're missing from the cinder. But yeah, anyway, I think that's cool. Shizwani got a couple, well, quite a few changes. I'm going to kind of briefly skip over this. Um, you can kind of see there's some stats. Um, her passive now basically gives her double her total resistances plus a hundred bonus armor and magic resistance um, if she hasn't taken damage for a certain amount of time it doesn't get reset from minion damage um, or small monsters so like the mini raptors won't um, it's basically like gives you a huge like you can't like damage her basically um, until that wears off which is um, one, two, and three seconds, depending on your level. At, at 14 and above, that'll last for three seconds. So your initiation is like you're not gonna take damage when when you're getting hit there. Um, also, enemies stunned by Shizwani are frozen, causing her first attack against them to deal bonus damage. The way this worked on the PBE was you couldn't apply frost to a target that had been stunned. So if you stunned them with your ult, you couldn't start applying frost to them until their lockout duration. But if you stunned them using your stun ability that isn't your ult, which is a new stun she has, um, you could stun them and then proc it for 20% of their max health and then ult them and then reproc that for another 20% of their max health instantly. And um, I mean, the damage has gone down. I think it was 25% on the PB at max level, but that's still... Uh, Quite a bit of damage and it's kind of a weird interaction awkward that you have to do it like that if you want that damage but anyway uh her q basically does uh sort of similar to the same thing she no longer knocks up enemies around the first target um it's it's only the first target um and the duration is shorter um like I'm, I'm like i said i'm skipping over stuff i might might not be saying like the very intricate details here her w is now kind of like a uh it shows an area on the ground, it swings once, and then it shows an area on the ground, and it swings in there again. does different damage each cast of that, and it applies her frost passive as well as her auto attacks do, um, which work with her E, her new E, but that's her W. You can kind of, it, it won't make sense to me to explain it to you, really, um, unless, like, you, you get to, um, 
you get to see it in game. It deals a certain amount of damage plus percentage of max health. That's the part that's confusing. Unless it got changed, that's a percentage of your max health. So you'll deal uh, 1.5 and then 4.5% maximum health damage extra on it of your health. Um, and it doesn't say on here actually if it's physical or magical damage, but it was physical when I was playing it on the PBE, which I found to be weird. I thought it would be magic, but it was physical. I don't know if that's changed, um, but it doesn't really state clearly on here uh, what, whether or not it's magic or physical. Here's her new E. Uh, you have to apply stacks of frost to people. You don't just like hit it and then instantly use it. Um, like old, she's wanting to get a big slow. You have to apply stacks of frost. Um, they they apply four stacks. It's kind of like a brawn passive. You can think of it. Um, your W can apply it. Uh, your auto attacks can apply it. But also, melee champions nearby you will apply, apply frost with their basic attacks. But range champions will not apply frost. Um, I don't think that you have to hit like similar to like Brom where you have Brom hits them with an auto or his Q and then you can start stacking Brom's passive. I'm pretty sure that a melee champion can hit them and start applying frost without you your first hit uh, yourself hitting them first. I'm not entirely sure on that. Um, but yeah, that there's a there's a weird little bit of travel time um, when you use the E it's not instant. It, there's like a travel projectile when it was on the PBE that could also be blocked by Yasuo's wind wall. Which, which is kind of weird, but um, once you get those four stacks of frost, nothing happens until you cast your E. So you actually have to reactivate your, like you have to activate your E, and then it will stun um, anybody that has four stacks of frost near you. And then there's the stun duration right there, and it does damage as well. And then once they're stunned by you, you can walk up to them and do that percentage of max health damage um, with your passive. And here is her ult. Um, It's uh, pretty much the same. Uh, bullets travel. Uh, bullets that travel before exploding are empowered. Um, so they tra after traveling 400 distance, they become empowered. Um, this is the damage of um, all of it and stuff. You can see one second doubled for empowered bullets uh, triggers, but is not prevented uh, by permafrost uh, per stun cooldown. So, okay, yeah, see, the, the, uh, the interaction I was talking about is still there. Um, it makes it so that you can't use your stun of your uh, E on them if you stun them with this to double proc your passive percentage health damage. But if you do it the other way, you can double proc it if you stun them first and then ult them. Uh, Empower bullets leave behind an ice storm that explodes after a brief delay, um, slows people, does extra damage in it, so... Um, the explosion slow is also 80% for 3 seconds, so that's pretty significant. Uh, so in a big AoE comp where you throw that and then people are still stuck in like the trail of it, then it's going to be pretty meaningful um, consequences for staying in there. Um, some splash updates here. Zack was the other one that got updated. Most of his stuff remained the same. Uh, his W is the same, his passive pretty much works the same, um, and his E is relatively the same. Um, so, uh, um, ba -ba -ba. I'm just looking through here. I, I've read through these briefly, but I'm just making sure I'm not missing anything. Uh, the knockup um, duration on his E is now 0.5 seconds rather than a full second. So that's um, it gives you more time to be able to get away and stuff uh, rather than getting chained out. His Q, what it does now is it's not just a kind of targeted ability that goes in front of you and slows everybody and hits AoE. It hits the first enemy, um, and then you'll grab the next enemy, you basic attack, and throw them towards each other. If you don't throw them towards each other, then there's no CC on this ability, but it does increase your auto attack range for the next ability um, to the range of your Q, and it's targeted, so you can just hit that person again, or you could farm a minion or whatnot. But um, if it's two different targets, you can throw minions at each other. You can throw a minion at the champion, I think. I'm not I'm not too sure. I didn't play it too, too much. This was the one that I said had a graphical, weird look to it. Um, the DDD collision damage to all enemies in the collision area is right there. Um, it doesn't say here... Um, Okay, you gain bonus attack range. Sorry, I was reading kind of what I was playing on the PBE. It looks like you just 
gain a bit of bonus attack range. It's not like very as long as your Q. Um, before this threw the things at each other and made them like airborne or knocked up, it doesn't look like it does that anymore. So I'm not going to like comment on if it does or doesn't just because I haven't seen it yet. Um, another big change is to his ult. Uh, he's immune to crowd control while charging. He can still be targeted and hit uh, by abilities. Um, but basically, you squish down upon yourself. You're not bouncing anymore. Now you're just squishing down upon yourself, becoming immune to crowd control and slowing enemies above you while charging. Kind of think of like a, like a Vlad pool, but you can actually be targeted in it. Um, but you, you are underneath the enemy. Um, enemies above him are slowed for a certain percentage. Um, let's Bounce becomes fully charged after one second and can be held for an additional 1.5 seconds thereafter. Um, if it's released before he charges it, uh, Zack just knocks back nearby enemies on release. If he fully charges it, then um, Zack scoops up all enemies around him, becoming unstoppable and carrying them to a target location. So it's like you can Skarner ult abduct everybody on top of you over walls. Um, as long as they're CC'd, then it's easier to hit but if I mean if they just like you start doing it and they're like okay I'm just gonna dash off of you then you do have that lockout time um, but you, you can you can instantly snap cast it but it'll just like be a knockout rather than like a candy van abduction mode um, and there's your damage on it it says the damage under the um, here I'm assuming that's you still do damage even if you don't long charge it um, but you can abduct people for like to like you can check like pull the, like carry them with you like a thousand range away from where you grab them which is pretty pretty crazy that, that'll have some really like hype plays made with it so i think that'll be cool um but that's as much as i'm gonna, i talked more than i wanted to about some of those champion changes um but that's a large focus of this patch so another large focus here is a bunch of item changes and new items this one is really cool the adaptive helm they really um cleaned up a bunch of magic resistance options as a tank Banshee'sville, you didn't really want it. Who cares if you block one ability every 40 seconds? You're a tank. You're going to be hit by fucking everything. That doesn't matter in almost any situation. Um, any champions that would want to build it didn't really want to build it because they gave no offensive stats, but they, they switched that around. Uh, they made Abyssal Scepter make more sense. They made the um, Banshee'sville make more sense. And they made another item that builds out a Spectre's Cowl. So now your magic resistance on a tank is very... It's accessible, but it's also... All right, I need magic resistance and health. I'm building a spear visage, even though I don't heal for at all, and like stuff like that. So that's it's really cool. I I do like that a lot of these have been tidied up there. So the adaptive helm builds out of a null magic mantle, um, and a specter's cowl, a rejuve bead. Um, so this is the new uh, specter's cowl item. What it does is gives you your base health regen, gives you your health, gives you your magic resist, and it gives you some cooldown reduction, which are all very nice. It's w It doesn't build out of a cool reduction item, cooldown reduction item like a Spirit Visage does, but it still gives you it in the end. Um, the passive is taking damage from a spell or effect um, reduces all subsequent magic damage from that spell or effect by 15% for 4 seconds. So like if you're getting damaged by um, um, Rumble Flamethrower, for example, um, you'll take the first tick and then you'll take 15% reduced damage from that spell. Um, as far as I know, um, taking magic damage from a spell or effect reduces all subsequent magic damage from that spell or effect by 15%. That you can have that active on multiple spells. I'm pretty sure. I'm not sure if one spell overwrites the other. Um, that's going to be a lot of stuff to remember on like the, the game side. That like, alright, you're taking like damage from 70 different sources and each of them hit you at different times. What's the remaining uh, time on this for all of those? Uh, the main thing this is aimed at, though, is things like Cassiopeia spamming her E on you, um, Azir's soldiers spamming on you. I'm pretty sure it would work for them. I'm not sure if that counts as spell casts or not. Um, but, yeah, that, like Rise spamming like Q, um, Singed Poison as well. All of those things will be reduced quite significantly by this. I think that'll... Um, I think this will be like really strong, and as long as like say getting damaged by a rumble flamethrower and then getting hit by his E, as long as that next spell cast doesn't override the remembering of the first spell cast's worth of damage, like this is probably just going to be the go-to magic resist item for every tank ever, no matter what. Um, but it's definitely really strong in some situations, and like other than that, strong in almost every other situation. I feel like um, here's the other new item: gargoyle stone plate. 
kind of replaces what they took away with the GA as just an armor health or an armor magic resist item um, that's not the draw portal and does something. Sometimes you don't want the draw portal, but sometimes you want the GA passive. This will be feeling pretty good in a lot of situations. Um, it basically could be used as a GA, to be completely honest, because you end up getting the health proc off of it, which saves your life, and then you don't end up dying because you used it at a good time, and it, you don't actually have to die to use it, which is good. Um, that was another thing on tanks, like, who cares if you have a GA in a lot of the situations? If you're dead, you either mispossessioned really poorly, and you probably should have just played better, because if you're dying as a tank, like, you have to be really, really out of position, and you're probably just going to die again if you're that far out of position, because your team can't follow up on you, because their tanky dude is suiciding. But the, the main situations you ran into with a GA were, if you're dying with a GA... Either the enemy team just screwed up and focused the wrong person, and you were winning the fight anyway because of that, or everyone on your team is dead, and now they just have to kill you twice. So GA didn't really feel good on a lot of um, situations. There, there was like certain situations that you would want to build it, but not not as many as you would think. Um, but this builds out of a chain vest negatron um, 950 gold. It gives you 40 MR, 40 magic resistance, so what you built into it. But if three enemies, um, champions are nearby, you gain an additional 40 magic resistance and armor. So basically doubles that to 80-80, which is really high. Um, it's the highest magic resist on an item, plus it gives you that in armor as well. And then the active on it, which is actually really cool. Um, for four seconds, grow in size and gain bonus health equal to 40% of your maximum health, but reduce damage dealt by you by 60%. If stone skin is active, so if there's three or more ch enemy champions nearby, the health increase becomes 100%. So say you build this item and you already have like 4k health, which will be pretty hard because this item doesn't give you any health anyway. Um, that'll be increased to 8k health for four seconds. You do 60% less damage during that time, but you can just use that when you're taking a ton of damage and then kind of just soak damage CC and stuff. It's only four seconds that you're doing reduced damage, but uh, things like Darius ult, true damage. That's not going to be reduced by that, but you're still going to be unkillable. And the big one for this that they said I think that they're going to monitor if it becomes a problem, Cho'Gath's ult now scales with the true damage on it with um, your health. So if you double your health there, you're getting a lot more damage, true damage, out of Cho'Gath's ult, which isn't affected by that um, damage reduction on there because it's true damage. So you'll be like a... Cho'Gath gets a ton of health anyway, like 10k health Cho'Gath, 12k health Cho'Gath, not going to be out of the question if you're running like percentage health stuff and like stacking a ton of health, and then you have your ult that goes off and doesn't get reduced, like that's going to be pretty ridiculous. Um, so... I think there's going to be some cool interactions with it. I don't know if they'll be as broken as everyone's like thinking they will be because it might just be like a you have to get to that like fantasy moment for it to work. Otherwise, like you try like for every 10 times you try it gets there once. That's not going to be worth it in the long run. I mean, it'll feel worth it for that one time because it'll be on top of the world. But interesting item as well. Um it adds a lot more to the to the tank items other than build tank don't die type things where it's like all right i'm still just using my champion's kit i'm using everything that comes with my champion and i'm just becoming more durable so that i can stay in the front and still do the same thing with my champion um it has a very unique active to it i think that's cool um so here's where i get angry and say they ruin sunfire 75 less health for 10 more armor. Okay, there's a little bit of like balancing act there. That's fine. Not really worried about that. I, I, I don't really care about that change. I, it's either here nor there. That's fine. Here's the thing. Burn damage. Sunfire went from 26 to 43 at levels 1 to 18 to 12 to 29 at levels 1 to 18. Um, what that means is you it's still doing one damage extra per level that you get with it, but the Sunfire used to give 25 flat and then one per level. And now it gives 11 flat and then one per level, which is why it says 12, because you're at level one, you still have a level. The Cinder, on the other hand, is the Bambi Cinder, the 1,100 gold that builds into this, and then you add another 1,800 to that to get to the Sunfire, um, which gives you a teeny bit more health now. 60 armor. You could get that in a lot of other places. 
It gives you an extra six fucking damage on the Sunfire. Six damage per second. Six. Six damage. You have to stand on that person for three or for uh, six minutes to get through. Or I'm I'm so angry right now. I'm just like skipping ahead and jumbling my words. One minute of standing on somebody to death is what I call the sunfire. One minute of it will give you 360 damage if you stand on them for one minute. Um, with with that six damage, um, in comparison with having the baby cinder or the full sunfire. To upgrade it for 1,800 gold, you're getting an extra 360 damage over a minute. The compensation is the bonus damage uh, versus minions and monsters went from 50% to 200%. I don't know if that's compensation. 200% uh, of 29 is 58. So you're doing 58 damage to the minions. Before, you had 43, and it did 50% more damage to... to um, Minions and monsters at 43. So unless this is too... I don't, I'm not actually sure how it ends up working out. If this is 200%, you do 58 extra damage plus that 29, or or what? Before, the Sunfire was doing about 65 damage, and now it's either doing 58 or add 29 to that. Um, that sort of doesn't matter in this situation. Where are you building the Sunfire most of the time? Like, this is probably, out of the entire patch, this is the biggest change to me, which is why I'm going to go over it the most. Out of out of the times you build Sunfire, why are you building it? You're building it on tank champions. And, I mean, here's their explanation. Sunfire has been the, t uh, the top lane first buy for quite some time. It's not hard to see why. With wave clear durability and champion combat power, it has everything to grow uh, a growing top laner needs. We're sharpening its identity as the pushing item by pushing... More strength into its damage against non-champions at the expense of dueling potency. You have Scion. Bunch of AoE uh, spells to clear waves. Poppy, same. Maokai, same. Nautilus, same. Malphite, same. The list goes on. Like Shen, unique example. Doesn't really have much AoE wave clear. Tom Kench has some, but not that much. Um, but for the most part, it's an outlying tank champion if they don't just have AoE wave clear abilities, and if it's not the first thing you're leveling up on that champion anyway. The thing that made tank champions do damage with the Sunfire was their ability to keep people in range for the Sunfire burn using their tank kit, which is not doing a ton of damage most of the time. It's like you're relying on doing a lot of extra damage with the Sunfire. So making it just like a wave clear only item? Like, who the fuck cares? 1,800 gold? Why would I build a Sunfire? I'll... Go. I got much. Uh, there's so many other things I'd rather build it on, um, and just keep, sit on the cinder, um, or just not even build the cinder and just like scrap this item entirely. Because not only did they gut the sunfire for everything it was like really valuable for, like the wave clear thing is just kind of like a. Uh, well, now you have this instead. No, no one cares. <laughs> it's like with the, that extra wave clear or not extra wave clear, like, it's honestly just doesn't matter that much. It's not going to matter too much at all. Um, you'll still see it in the jungle because you need that Cinder Hulk damage to monsters on a lot of uh, jungle clear champions um, just for the speed of clearing it. Um, but they, they gutted it. Um, but what I was getting into is they changed a lot of the other items um, and made them more unique. They added new items and stuff to, to give you more options, and they made some of the other options just better, like... Like, the Dead Man's Plate just feels a lot better. So they made all these other options and changed a bunch of other variables while at the same time nerfing the Sunfire. So they just changed everything at once. So what, where's, your, where's your test if this is what you wanted or not when you've just changed so many variables that you never you don't even know what you're testing for or towards anymore? I don't know. I'm, I really like the Sunfire, like, on Scion and stuff. Like, Sunfire was, like, that was my jam. And now I might not even build it on a lot of, like, champions. We'll, we'll end up seeing... I mean, it opens up the door for some other, like, choices. But we'll see. Like, feels bad, man. Feels feels bad. Um, Spirit Visage, like, they just kind of, like, tweaked a bunch of numbers around on a lot of stuff. Spirit Visage lost 75 health, gained 5 magic resistance. The bonus healing is now 5% higher, so it fills its role a little bit better now that you have other options like the Adaptive Helm. Spectre's Cow magic resistance is down slightly. Um, still costs the same. Um... 
but you're building it to get into those other items anyway. Uh, Dead Man's Plate. 75 health off, 68, 10 armor up. Same as the Sunfire. Gain momentum, gain up to 12.5. It's now up to 20 momentum stacks per second while moving. Um, and so you stack it faster, for one. It doesn't take 8 seconds to stack anymore. It takes 5 if you're getting max stacks. Uh, crushing Blow Slow no longer decays over the duration. So I think that is... I don't know if it's a half second or a full second of 50% slow that used to decay over the duration, but now it just stays at 50% slow. So basically adds some extra CC to a lot of people's kits and still has that damage. Basic attacks while below 100 stacks no longer purge current stacks to deal damage. Instead, they reduce momentum stacks by 15 for uh, no bonus effect. A lot of the times, I mean, it's still going to expend it if you're full stacks, but a lot of the times you felt like you didn't want to auto when you had a dead man's because you didn't want to lose um, that growth towards having full stacks or lose the movement speed or lose any of that. You gain the stacks faster. They don't punish you for autoing stuff to drop them off. I mean, that extra damage that you got from it was minuscule because you got double the damage anyway if you waited till 100 stacks plus the extra damage you got for having more stacks. And then the slow when you hit them is more meaningful. And even when it blows the slow off and you lose that movement speed, you stack it up faster. Dead Man's Plate feels so much better in so many areas that even if Sunfire didn't get nerfed, you'd be like, I still want a Dead Man's because it does like a lot of things that it like opens up a lot of opportunities for my champion. So Dead Man's feels cool. Feels good what they did with it. Sunfire, not so much. Um, the Randuins here. I don't like what they did with the Randuins here. They made it awkward build path of the century. Cost is unchanged. The health you get from it is 150 less. Uh, critical strike damage reduction is 20% rather than 10. They actually removed the critical strike damage reduction entirely on the PBE and then just added it back. So it still has that unique interaction there, which is actually pretty strong. People would actually buy two Randuins because it used to be not unique in the critical strike damage reduction. Um, the active slow is no longer 4 seconds for 35%. It's it's 55% for 2 seconds. So it's more intense but less timing on it. But look at this. Rather than a giant spell, Warden's Mail and Gold, it's a Ruby Crystal, a Warden's Mail, a Ruby Crystal, and Gold. Not only did they not put the two Ruby Crystals beside each other because it would make it look even more ridiculous and people would catch on it more. It's two Ruby Crystals. Why? Why is it two ruby crystals? Is it because a giant spell gives more health by itself than the entire full randuin? So you had to like nerf it? Just put that to 360 then or something. Two ruby crystals. A lot of the times I'd be building randuins like fourth or third or fourth item, sometimes even fifth. So you'd buy the giant spell and then you'd hold on to it if you wanted the health. But you're not going to buy the health ever because it's a ruby crystal. Like, ugh, it feels terrible. It's such an awkward build path. Like all of this, all of these changes and tweaks, fine. But leave it as a giant spell. Oh, that's disgusting. It, I don't know. Makes me sad, man. Makes me sad. But let's move on. Warmogs, um, basically, uh, regens better than it did. Uh, regens uh, at an earlier threshold than it did. Uh, cooldown on taking damage is less, so you'll be regening it faster. And the minions don't put it to half of that six seconds to three rather than full if a champion hits you or a, mo a monster, I'm assuming a jungle monster. Thing is, it still does the exact same thing it always did. It gave a shit ton of health and gave you a bit of regen, and you'd probably just rather have other items. But now that they screwed other items, like that Sunfire, maybe I'll maybe I'll build this. Maybe I want that huge chunk of health and then the Thorn Mail to replicate what my Sunfire maybe used to do. I don't know. I'm... I'm bummed. No one's even going to get any information out of this. So did you watch Sick Motion's patch review? Yeah, what do you think of it? I think he's sad about the Sunfire. No, what about the patch? Oh, I, I, I didn't get anything else other than he was sad about the Sunfire out of it. <laughs> it's, it's a bummer. Uh, we need to start kind of skipping through this a little faster. Basically, the, the big things are, are out of here. Uh, Banshee's Veil. So ban picture it this way. Banshee's Veil and Abyssal Scepter basically um, swapped their rules. Um... Banshee's Veil is now your caster damage item. Abyssal Scepter is now your tank item. They kept their same passives, but they had their stats swapped around to make sense of what would be wanting to build it. So you don't care about that uh, shield on a tank, like I said earlier, because you're tanking a shit ton of stuff. So what it does now is it gives that shield 
Um, it gives 70 AP. It gives less magic resistance, so 25 less, but it still gives you a bit of magic resistance for lanes. So if you're dealing with like a heavy uh, magic damage oppressive champion, you could build a um, no magic mantle. You can't build a Negatron anymore. It doesn't build out of that. But you can build some early magic resistance with a plan to spend it somewhere. Um, say like a Lux, a Twisted Fate, a Zerath is laning against a Syndra or a... Cassidin or a Fizz, someone who does a lot of damage, magic damage or burst, or they just they just want something to deal with that. You didn't want to build it into a GA necessarily, which doesn't build out a magic resistance anymore anyway, but you didn't want to get an Abyssal Scepter because the point of playing those champions is to play back and the Abyssal Scepter passive is completely wasted if you're not in range of the champions you're dealing damage to. So that made Abyssal Scepter not merely make sense for what it was doing, and it made the... Um, getting magic resistance kind of awkward on a lane that's always like not always but quite often laning AP versus AP so this makes a lot more sense you get that um, ability sh um, shield that um, is passive not an active like the AD one um, refreshes after no damage taken from enemy champions for 40 seconds so that's the same so it's the same spell shield except it gives you 70 AP so Feels really cool. Health removed, ability power added. Um, it builds out of a Fiendish Codex, a Null Magic Mantle, Blasting Wand, and some gold. And it doesn't say in here, so I'm not sure what's up with that. I'm pretty sure it gives you cooldown reduction. The old Banshee's Veil didn't give cooldown reduction. It gave like a shit ton of magic resistance on the shield. So it's not saying that it gives cooldown reduction now, so I think they just missed that in the patch notes, honestly. But this uh, Fiendish Codex is, in a, is a cooldown reduction item. How awkward would it be that you build a cooldown reduction item and your final build doesn't give cooldown reduction? But I guess that's similar to the Rage Blade, where you build a bunch of attack speed and then you buy the item and you get less attack speed than you had before you bought it. And Rage Blade also didn't offer attack speed um, for the longest time, so you just lost all that attack speed, which felt really awkward. So I'm assuming it has cooldown reduction, so bear with me here. Uh, the Abyssal, on the other hand, um, very minor cost increase, um, but it builds out of a Spectre's Cowl and a Negatron. So same build path as the Banshee's Veil, but now it gives um, health where the Abyssal didn't before. It gives base health regen, gives more magic resistance, and it gives cooldown reduction here, um, which is unchanged. The old Abyssal gave cooldown reduction, but the old Banshee's didn't, as we were just going over. Spectre's Cal Negatron Cloak, there's no cooldown reduction there, so you get no cooldown reduction out of the build path, but you get 10% for building it. Um, no longer grants ability power, obviously there's no ability power in the build, but nearby enemy champions take 10% more magic damage. As a tank, you're going to be in the front line. If you're doing your job right, or even connected to the internet most of the time, you're going to be nearby enemy champions, so... That's where you want the, the aura that makes near, champions that are near you take more magic damage. This will buff your mage champion that didn't want to buy this in lane. They will do more damage based on what you built. This, like, this is going to be so nice for like a lot of like like um, AP mid champions are going to be like, man, I hope my tank builds an Abyssal Scepter because it's a good magic resist health item. Gives cooldown reduction. It gives you all the tank stats you want, and then also makes your damage higher. Um, obviously, as a tank, like it'll make your if you're crazy enough to build a shitty Sunfire, um, or like Maokai, for example, does a lot of magic damage. Don't know if you'd be building it on him because the Spirit Visage is really strong on him. But other like AP-ish focused tank champions, or even if you're not an AP focused tank champion, there's no magic um, ability power on here, so you can still build this item, even if you yourself do not very much magic damage. If say you're playing Poppy. And you have four AP champions on your team. You go, man, what the hell happened in champ select? I better build an Abyssal Scepter. It's still not going to be a bad buy. It's going to look weird for a bit because people are used to what it used to be. But it, it opens up a lot of things. So these ch changes to the items, I, I really like. They make a lot of sense. The Sunfire one, not so much. Guardian Angel, kind of controversial chains here. Um, it's an armor item that gives AD. Last item that was like that was Atmos. It's gone now. Bye. Atmos. But not only that, it's it gives you that stasis passive um, that revives you, and it builds out of cloth armor, 800 gold. So cloth armor, 300 gold, not really much of a lane investment, but it'll help you, or uh, investment early, but it'll help you in lane. 800 gold. I mean, you'll save that up. A BF sword, that's a thing that I buy as an AD carry. Did I have that cloth armor from lane? Yeah. Do you have your BF swords? 
Yeah? Did you have 800 gold? Yeah, I do. Cool, you can have a GA as an 80 carry now, which gives half the armor, which is only 30 now, instead of 60. No longer gives magic resistance, so it's far less defensive. But you gain 40 AD on it, so you don't feel like you're going that far out of what you would want to be building on attack damage carry. And if you position like an ape, guess what? Come back to life. That one's on us. Here's your mulligan. So it's going to be kind of weird... Like, this just feels wrong to me, but, I mean, they nerfed the shit out of the, the defenses on it, so it's still going to be easy to kill the AD carry. It's just no burden for them to build it, really. Um, and here's another thing. Upon taking lethal damage, restore 30% max health and mana over 4 seconds in the stasis. And now it's 50%, but it's base health and 30% max mana over 4 seconds. So... As an AD carry, you'll actually be getting more health because you're getting your base health back. As a tanky champion, you wouldn't be getting as much because you were getting 30% of your max health and you'd probably build a bunch of tank items. So 50% base health or 30% max health for a tankier champion is oh, more than likely going to go to the 30% uh, maximum health because that takes into account things that you got from your other items, not just your base stats. Really big change to Sterix here uh, that I completely skipped over until someone in my chat mentioned it. It's it's pretty big, honestly. Um, health unchanged. Base attack damage up 5%. Okay, that's fine. It's it's 5% increased base attack damage. Still gives you that shield um, that rapidly decays um, if you take that much damage within 5 seconds. So if you're slowly taking that damage, the shield's never going to proc, but you have to like, get bursted down, sort of, so you don't really want it on a tank champion. You want it on a bruiser champion, and the reason you want it on a bruiser champion rather than an AD is because rather than giving you a shield of 30% of your max health, it gives you a shield for 75% of your bonus health. So 30% of your max health, um, say you have 3k health for like a bruiser, that's going to be a... Um, a shield of 900. Say you have 3k health, that's a bruiser, 75% of your bonus health, that's still going to be a shield of about 900 because you're not getting anything from your base health. But you're getting that for 8 seconds for shielding rather than 3. So you actually get to make use out of it, for one. You get to actually stay in the fight and make use out of it. It doesn't like deteriorate instantly. Um, and when lifeline triggers, you grow in size and strength um, like you used to, but you gain an additional 40% base damage. This doesn't just increase that 30% to 40%. That's 30% and then add an additional 40% uh, there. And it's an additional, like added. It's not um, kind of multiplicative of some way if they could do that. So that's 70% increased base damage. That's not total AD. It's not going to be like you have 400 AD and you gain 70% of that. It's, it's your base damage. But there's a couple cool interactions with base damage. Certain champions have increased base damage... Uh, or sp spells that um, scale with base damage. I think they took most of those out. I'm not sure if there's any left. But Sheen scales with the base damage. Trinity Force scales with the base damage. 150% of your base damage is the Trinity, uh, the Trinity Force proc. So now you're going to gain 70% um, more base damage. So this 70% more base damage is going to be then 150% of however much this is, is going to be added to your Trinity Force proc. So it's champions like Aurelia, like Jax, that want that health item, unless you're stacking a lot of health, you're not going to get that much of a bigger shield since it's bonus health. It, it looks like it's a huge increase, but your max health, like, you, that, that takes into account base health as well. So, like, a lot of champions have like around 2k base health, 1.5 to 2k. So you're, you're still missing out. The shield will be bigger if you dedicate another item to health. It should be. Um, but that's not the main thing. It's the duration of that shield and that huge base damage increase. It's massive. So uh, I think it'll definitely come back into play. And more, mainly for bruisers and whatnot, not for ADs. But ADs, like, they have their GA now. So why would you want it anyway? Um... The thing about that as well is it gives dueling potential, whereas the GA didn't really. If I was splitting on a champion, I didn't necessarily want a GA because if I was dying with that GA, a lot of the times it was like I was either just getting like killed anyway, and then I lose the GA passive, doesn't do that much for me, and then I probably still die. But even if I don't, I don't have that GA passive for five minutes. The Sterix gives more dueling potential, and it's a much shorter lockout time um, on when it's going to be available again. Uh, and here's another really cool uh, change for top lane, um, mostly, but it, it'll probably be used in other lanes as well. Doran Shield, uh, down 50 gold, so it's uh, 400, so you can take two health potions with it as well. So there's um, an extra health per th potion worth of sustain, so 150 health. 
um, very rapidly. Six flat health regen, same what it used to be. Uh, no longer reduces damage from ba champion's basic attacks or single target spells, which made it really strong against things like Pantheon spamming spells or like just auto attack damage champions in general, reducing that damage. Um, but not so strong against things like Renekton, for example, because he ended up just destroying you with his abilities anyway, because uh, it didn't give any armor. Uh, your basic attacks deal an extra five damage on hits, so it, it does help with last hitting if you were wanting to decide if you're going this or like a Doran's Blade. It does help with that last hitting on certain champions that'll feel nice on. Um, and then Unique Passive regain 20 health over 10 seconds after taking damage from an enemy champion. So in the terms of health per 5, um, there is um, quite a lot more health per 5 on this item. Um, you're going to be gaining an extra 10 health per 5. Um, for the duration of that active. I mean, if you're having it active the whole lane, that's going to be very helpful, but if you don't, it's not going to like overly increase it. But you're going to have 16 health per 5 for when this is active, just with this as a starting item, not including like your um, base health regen or anything. This is all flat and independent of your base health regen, so it doesn't scale with the game. But it's really strong early, and it gets you through those early levels. Say you're, say you're fighting a Rumble, or you're fighting someone like a Teemo with like that persistent dot, or you're fighting someone like a Rumble with um, Deathfire Touch. Something that's consistently doing damage to you. Every time you get that damage tick, you will refresh the duration of this unique passive that regains you health. So Doran Shield now is strong against Rumble. Doran Shield is also strong on Rumble now for this reason. It was always like kind of what people would pick up a lot of the times, but now it's even better. So there's like a... The Doran Shield seems really, really strong. We'll put it that way. It seems very, very strong with these changes to it. Um, and then we have some other changes to items. Blade of the Ruined King is up 100 gold. Death's Dance is up 5 AD. So is Bloodthirster, so is Ravenous Hydra. Um, but Death's Dance Damage Deferred is now... 50, you don't defer 15% damage. You now defer 30. So you're still going to be taking that over time after um, it's dealt to you. But you're not just going to get bursted down as like an assassin, and you might have time to work that health back using the lifesteal portion of the death dance, or just having a Karma or a Lulu or some stupid character on the team that shields you or Soraka to heal you through it anyway. But you'll be, it'll be a lot harder to burst down that person that builds the death dance, so that'll um, have a lot of strong interactions. Uh, Infinity Edge is 200 gold cheaper, so that's a, just a direct buff to crit marksmen's. Ah, uh, la la la. Zeal's 100 gold cheaper, so there's 300 gold off of your like main like power buys for crit damage marksmen's, even though you're probably building a Bork now because it's built on everyone because it's so damn strong. Hurricane no longer applies on-hit effects on the bolts, so on-hit Kennen, on-hit like Teemo, even Kale maybe. Uh, champions that were just building it to apply those on-hit effects um, to multiple champions aren't going to do so no more. Um, the bolts uh, attack damage though is now 40% rather than 25, so it'll be stronger on um, champions that just stack a lot of AD. Uh, da, da, da. Rapid fire cannon. Damage to champions is lower, but your attacks become energized faster. It wasn't really about the extra damage proc on it. It was always about the the having that extra attack range to um, maybe get off a proc that allows you to attack more often. Uh, get, like get a like if you have a cleaver with it, for example, getting that cleaver proc off, things like that. Um, so that it becoming energized faster probably better than having an extra 40 um, magic damage really cares as an 80 carry you're going to be doing 10 times that just by autoing once in physical static shiv deals uh more damage to enemy champions so up to 40 more and this can crit so that could be up to 80 more um bonus damage to minions is the same um it's nerfed but it's it balances out with the fact that it is um doing more so it's a little less, sorry, at early levels, but it still scales to the same. Champions like Trinomir or whatnot, they would want to build that, or um, definitely I'll feel a bit better about the Shiv. Um, it's still a strong wave clear item as well, but it's just going to be doing more damage to like people you fight with it. Phantom Dancer, up 50 gold. Um, the combination cost is up 150 gold because the zeal price went down. Um, Phantom Dancer is still stupid strong. I think it should get nerfed, but it doesn't. Um, it's strong on like a lot of champions, like bruiser champions. Like you build it because of the movement speed buff. You build it because of the damage reduction. You build it because um, all like um, 
those two things in general are fine, but then like there's a lot of champions like Renekton does well with attack speed, and then if you crit, like guess what? You just won the game. Um, so they increased a lot of um, the armor on items, but lowered health, but then they also reduced armor penetration on these items. Dominix has actually 20% uh, higher damage, so you do more damage, but armor is going to be more effective against it. Um, Mortal Reminder is down, so is um, this in cost, but you're losing 10% bonus armor um, penetration. So if they have 200 bonus armor, you just lost 20 armor pen, which is going to be meaningful. Uh, the maximum shred on a cleaver is now 24% from 30. Um, so just armor shred in general got nerfed. They said that they wanted to change the fact and reliance on armor shred to be able to balance um, it elsewhere and put power into AD carries elsewhere. So it'll be interesting to see how they end up deciding to do that. But for now, it looks like armor stacking tanks are going to be pretty strong um, with, with the percentage health nerfs there. Uh, they changed... I'm not going to go over these. I did go over them. But they basically... They changed the way support items work. Ancient Coin no longer just gives you passive stuff. Um, it has a chance to drop an item kind of like a threshold that you can pick up for gold and restoring percentage of um, of missing mana on it. So, I mean, that's kind of cool. They added quests to all the support items which make, um, make them stronger. Uh, there's some unique stuff with it. Um, interesting things. Uh, honestly, like it's just going to take too long to go over all of it if, if you're interested in it. I don't know how it really compares to what they did before to now because I don't play support very often. I don't pay attention to the itemization other than knowing what the support items are. So um, I'd go through and read it if I was you guys, but I'm not going to sit here and go through it right now because we're at 50 minutes already. I was really hoping to keep this under 45. Um, the new crowd control name display, so you can see Charmed right there. It's, it's much easier to tell who is CC'd. Um, I think this is really cool here. The end of game stats have some more stats for people to uh, kind of measure their performance on and things that I have been saying that I thought would be like really cool for a while. Uh, damage mitigated on self, how much damage you reduced or blocked from yourself through your abilities and shields. So like with Scion, how much damage did I block with my shield? Probably a shit ton. Uh, damage dealt to objectives, so like to epic monsters and structures. Damage dealt to turrets, so just structures. Um, with no epic monsters in there, which I think is cool, because if you end up doing like, it's gonna be a really fun one to do. Um, like if you're building a banner, if you're building a draw portal, and your minion gets the last hit on the tower, it doesn't look like you really contributed that much, and you're probably not at team fights very much if you're like building those items and trying to like really get that pushing strategy going. Um, but the damage dealt to structures is gonna be really interesting, because like. You, you get, like, the turret down 90% of the way and a minion takes it or, like, something like that. Like, I don't think you should be punished on being not able to measure what you do because you decided to let the tower deny, say, four more minions by not hitting it and one of the minions last hit the tower rather than you. Even though you're in range for the local gold, you didn't get credit for the tower, so it looks like you did a little less. So, I mean... Towers killed is still going to be an important stat, but I think the damage delta turrets is going to be a lot more meaningful as far as seeing the actual contribution. Um, vision score um, determines how effective your vision contribution and denial was. That's going to be controversial to actually measure, but that probably has something to do with how the mastery system works um, for measuring supports contribution. So they probably had some secret system like in the game already to kind of monitor that. Uh, crowd control score, duration of all crowd control you applied over the game. This one needs a bit more time in the shop, but look for it in the future patch. This one I'm very, very excited for. Like when you're when you're just doing everything and you lose a team fight, you're like, how did we lose? And like, it's very hard to kind of measure your contribution as like a tanky champion, even though like even if you're out damaging your damage carries, like this is just gonna be such a cool stat. I'm re I'm really excited to actually see how long like a scion who's hitting a shit ton of aoe ccs actually crowd controls people for and i hope that it actually shows like a, a difference between like slows and like actual hard cc and has a different measure for like slows like a 20 percent slow obviously wouldn't be as worth as much as an 80 percent slow onto someone um but maybe like you can have like a total movement speed denied 
stat. So it'll have like an 80% slow for two seconds versus a 20% move speed slow for two seconds. Obviously the 80% will have denied more movement speed per time type thing. Cause you're just gonna have to multiply how much movement speed you deny over how long you denied that for and get your total movement speed denied over the game. I think that would be a really cool way to do it. But I'm really excited for these extra monitoring things like for like tank champions and like support champions and stuff just to kind of compare like what you've done f based on like what you would have expected yourself to do, compare yourself to others in that same role and just compare your contribution better than just always looking at the damage meter because that's all we really have to look at right now. So I'm really excited about that. Um, here's another cool thing, active item feedback that'll actually show um, numbers kind of like your shielding on the Aegis. Now you have damage re um, redirected and healing received from Knight's Vow, um, Mikhail's successful cleanses, redemption healing done and damage dealt. So that'll not only like show like, oh man, I'm going for a high score on my, uh, on my Knight's Vow type thing. It'll actually show like, was it worth buying this? And it's also just a cool stat to see in the game. Um, I, I'm really happy with all those things. I, I just think it's really cool kind of putting focus on all of these things that, like, as a like a like like an initiator or, like, a frontliner, like, it's, like, you might have, like, a lot of deaths. You might, like, go in. You might just, like, have your team watch you die, and you might lose the game for it, and it's going to suck. But at least you can see what you contributed and stuff for it. Um, and in the ones that you don't die and it doesn't suck, like every situation it's going to be cool to see this is really nice see this is someone igniting an enemy champion and it shows who ignited them based on a very minimalistic um animation type thing there seven seasons into the game there was literally no way unless you're analyzing the damage numbers and there's a big level difference between the two people that could have ignited you but if they're the same level and they're the same distance from you, there was no way to tell which one ignited you unless the death recrap screen actually showed it properly and you died. But if you didn't die, you don't know who used their ignite. So this is actually a change that took so long to do for something that you would assume would be much faster for like the clarity and competitive importance of knowing who used their ignite. I don't know how many times I'm like, yeah, someone used their ignite, but their team has two or three ignites. It's like, it's a mystery. Who has their ignite up? It would change the way that you were able to play the lanes until that ignite would have been back up if you knew who it was. But if you don't, it really doesn't affect anything. It would be like if if someone flashed, but you're able to use anybody's flash cooldown. You don't know you saw who flashed, but you don't know whose cooldown was actually used. That'd be unacceptable. This is on a smaller scale, but finally it's kind of like clarified there. I'm I'm happy about that. Um, they they made the death visual effects a little bit faster and snappier to actually tell what's going on in the fight. There's some death effects I can't think of any off the top of my head, but it was actually hard to tell if they're actually dead, just based on the animation type thing. So there's that. Um, active item HUD has been changed a little bit. Rift Herald is basically there's all the numbers here if you want to uh, see it. It no longer gives you dueling potential and damage. It gives you an item that you have to use within four minutes of picking it up that basically spawns. Think of it as like a Yorick Maiden that pushes a lane by itself and goes absolutely apeshit in that lane. People, like, the champions will have to kill it. It has the same eye mechanic to kill it. Um, and it does, it just absolutely annihilates towers. So if you're able to have a Rift Herald and then win a team fight after it and push up with that Rift Herald, you're going to be taking huge chunks of their base. Like, you're going to be, like, pushing two, three towers, like, but by the time they spawn with, like, mid-game death timers or, like, early early to mid-game death timers. So it, it's going to be really strong. And it gives the pushing pressure and pushing potential to champions that are, like, might not be doing it because it has nothing to do with your stats. It just has to do with, like, using it at the right time and then being able to protect it, probably. So, like, a Scion could outpush a Jax if they're pushing separate lanes just because he has the Rift Herald and used it at a good time or used it at, like... I don't know. It, it's really controversial. That thing's going to be hard to balance. Um, champions gain magic resist per level. Anyone that didn't have magic resist per level now has 0.5 magic resist per level. That'll give you 9 magic resist to level 18. It's not the most, but it's definitely a little bit more than before. Stacking flat magic pens is definitely not going to be as strong. Um, if you think uh, pen boots give you 15 magic pen, uh, now think about pen boots. You're still going to buy them in the situation, but now at level 18, those pen boots are only worth 6 magic pen. Feels pretty shitty. It's a good way to look at it. Um, that basically nullifies your magic pen runes, your red magic pen runes on an AP champion. Completely takes them away at uh, level, like later levels in the game. Things like that. But I mean, you have other way, like you have other magic pen and other damage sources and stuff. So it's not like the end of the world. Just a way to look at it. Uh, Graves can no longer queue up multiple animations and stuff to um, 
uh, have weird interactions. If you used his E and his ult in like the proper combination during the same auto attack, you could actually dash forward while ulting pretty much, or stay still, or basically you wouldn't be knocked back while ulting. You could actually like ult forward it is what it looked like. It looked really weird. Um, but you could like be chasing someone down and ulting, but continuing to chase if you did it really, really well. So that, that was unintended, I guess. It's no longer there. Um, bunch of bug fixes on Renekton. There was a bug with him not getting the proper amount of fury um, when entering combat with his first auto. Uh, calls his Q's damage now scales with all size modifying, not just his ult. Uh, fixed a bug where it didn't hit invisible targets. I definitely did flash on an invisible target and didn't kill them and was completely baffled because I knew they should have died to it. I think that's what ended up happening. And this other bug, Slice and Dice, fixed a timing issue that could inconsistently cause Slice and Dice to not hit enemies Renekton pass through. Sounds bad. It's like, oh, you didn't do damage. Now picture that as you didn't get a reset on your slice and dice and missed a kill or missed getting away or missed something thing big that ended up you losing or getting barren was the difference in between you living and dying or killing and not killing the target that you were going for. Pretty big fucking bug with Renekton. And I had that happen quite a few times. It was very frustrating. Like it was happening consistently enough that I would experience that at least probably once every couple, like one or two Renekton games, at least one time, which might be minuscule and not matter at all in lane, or it might be the game-breaking thing in a team fight that you go in for that clutch dash and you dash through someone and it doesn't do damage or reset your dash, things like that. Um, if spell fluxes target dies while E is midair, it'll still spread. Um, some changes here that are really just about Maokai um, and not making unintended uh, interactions with him. Poacher's Dirk got changed a bit. No one really buys that as far as I see. If teleport is cast off screen, it'll search for a nearby unit to target. I'm not sure how that actually works. Like if I if I cast my teleport on a mini map in the middle of a team fight and I can't see a ward because there's too much shit going on, does that mean it'll just auto target a ward that's near it? Or something that I can teleport to that I might not have seen? Very little clarity on that, so I don't, I'm not going to comment on that. It could be a very big change for a top laner you running teleport, but not really enough to kind of talk about it there. Um, normally, I would go over these um, bugs here, but we're already we're, we hit an hour, way longer than I wanted to kind of do this. I'll probably split it into two parts. I wasn't planning on doing it, but probably end up having to now. Um, but yeah. Actually, I probably won't split it into two parts because I don't feel like re-rendering the video. It'll just be an hour-long patch note video, ripperoni. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm not going to go over the bug fixes just because I want to wrap this up. It's it's over an hour now. Um, hopefully that helped with uh, your guys' learning of it. There's some things I didn't go over that's probably just easier to do it yourself. And it is biased. It's from my opinion of the changes that affect me the most and what I will be experiencing in game. So keep that in mind. I didn't read up over any of the support items for that reason. I focused on the Sunfire butchering for that reason as well. So you, you might still want to touch up on a few things here because we didn't cover it all. But as always, thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully you found it helpful. Let me know if there's anything you'd like to see changed or anything that you did like about the video in the comments below. Uh, stream, social media, links in the description as they always are. And um, yeah, drop a like if you found the video helpful and we'll see you guys next time.